These two laptops cost about a combined $5,000 when they were new. Unfortunately, this one overheats, and this one doesn't show a display. But today, we're gonna fix that. Let's get started on the Razer. So this is the Razer Blade Pro 17. It's got a Core i7, 2.3 gigahertz, and 16 gigs of RAM. This computer starts up and seems to work just fine, except for the fact that the fans ramp up as soon as you start doing anything. So I'm gonna get the bottom cover off. Let's have a look at the inside. I want to use this laptop more, but I find myself just getting annoyed by it because the fans just ramp up so much so fast, it just gets annoying to use. So I'm not sure what the solution is going to be, but I've got a couple things in mind. Let's have a look at the inside first. It's a little dusty, not too bad. So I'm just going to power it on real quick so you can see what the fans are doing. And then we can judge and see whether I actually get them quieter when I do the repairs. There we go. I haven't even logged in. I haven't even put my pin in and the fans are already kicking up. So that's the issue I'm trying to fix. Let's get into it and check out the thermal paste first. Now, if you've been watching my videos for quite a while, I actually did make a video that included this laptop in it. And if I remember right, I did clean the fans out and the heat sinks but I think this one was super dirty. So I think what I might do here is remove the fan and heat sinks and I might even just take the board out. I don't think there's really anything under the board that would affect anything, but I do wanna make sure and clean the keyboard and everything like that. So first thing I'm gonna do though is remove the battery power from the machine. And now we're safe to continue working and disassembling it. I'm seeing some warranty stickers on here. So it looks like I didn't do too much whenever I did this last but looks like we got a couple screws on each fan and then the and then the screws for the heat sinks the razor blade pro 17 sold brand new for 2700 to 4000 dollars now right now you can get these on amazon for about 1200 dollars so that's significantly less than they were when they were brand new but still quite a bit of money for a laptop so i'm really hoping i can fix this one and get these fans working right just have these cables on the edges Display cables. I guess I could unhook it since we're going to need to do that anyway. Okay. Fans come out separately. Fan is not plugged. It's not the cleanest fan in the world, but it's also not that dirty. Yeah, same here. There we go. Okay. What do we got here? It looks like some thermal paste. And I was going to say it looks like definitely not the perfect amount, but I think I'm the one that put that on there. So clearly it's got to be the perfect amount. And these heat sinks also are pretty clean. So I don't really see an issue there. Like I said, I'm going to remove this board so we can look at the keyboard underneath. This doesn't... Uh, actually, that looks okay. It looks kind of funky when you look at it, but... Ah! Now oh, it's stuck to my finger. Nice one. There we go. That's nice and sticky. So let's remove this perfect amount of thermal paste. And I'm thinking after I clean anything from under the board, then I'm gonna apply some liquid metal to this bad boy. I feel like that will get it much cooler. But we gotta get this clean first, especially cause it seems like whenever I have fresh thermal paste on something, and I remove it from the board. I just get thermal paste all over everything, including myself sometimes. So this is just going to be better for me to uh, be able to get this thing off without getting thermal paste everywhere.
Now it looks like between these little capacitors here on the chip, it looks like we got some old thermal paste. And this was before I repasted it a while back. So this is from a long time ago. This isn't really necessary, I don't think, but I just like the look of it. I like to know it's been cleaned if I'm doing all this work. So I'm just going through with a metal dental pick, which is probably not the best idea. Okay, no, it's for sure not the best idea, but that's what I do. I've just gotten used to it for some reason. So I'm going through and cleaning all of this excess thermal paste up. And then we'll put liquid metal on it. And there better not be any liquid metal that ends up on, on these. Thermal paste is fine because it's not conductive, but liquid metal definitely is, so. We got to make sure and be careful of that. But with these, we just need a thin, a thin coating of liquid metal. And then I'm also going to add some conformal coating to these little guys right here. And that's going to help make sure that they don't get shorted out or anything like that. Now I'm just going to go through and clean this up. Now with some IPA, I'm gonna come through and just clean it some more. And honestly, it doesn't, like this down here doesn't need to be that clean. The main thing is the chip itself. But it's just nice when it is. Sometimes, I mean, especially if I'm going through all the work to do all of this, then Having it not that clean, it's just kind of, I don't know, makes me feel like I didn't do as good of a job as I could have. And honestly, sometimes I just call that good, even if I could have done a better job. But even this one, you know, I, I could clean those up better, but that's looking pretty good. And now that I just say that, I realized I actually am going to need to clean it up better because... I want to put conformal coating on, so I need to make sure that's nice and clean so that can, that coating will stick. So, after all that, I do need to get this a little bit cleaner in spots. Now we're getting a little closer. Just need to get a little bit better in some of these spots. And we'll probably just speed the rest of this up. Okay, and those are looking pretty good. We'll put some conformal coating on these little guys once we get this board out and then back in. For now, let's get it out so we can have a look at the keyboard, make sure that's all clean and make sure the top of the board is clean as well. So I'm just gonna start by removing all the little ribbon cables that we need to remove to get the board out. And then we'll get the screws out and pull the board out. Ah, oh, that screw's smaller, come on. All the screws so far, except for that one, are exactly the same size, that's just mean. Why would a company do that? I'm just gonna mark that. Hopefully I'll remember that's what it means. Okay, there we go, there we go, come on. Mm. 
There we go. Let's look at the bottom side. It's a little dirty, really not too bad at all though. It's gonna come in with some canned air. And I'm gonna use my brush to loosen any of the dirt over here. Really, this isn't a big deal. But, I mean, since it's out, we might as well give it a little bit of a cleaning. This really looks pretty good underneath. Okay, and keyboard actually looks pretty good. Does not make a lot of sense why this thing was getting so loud and the fans were ramping up, like, basically as soon as you turn it on. I think, actually, this looks great. Let's just get the board back in and get some liquid metal installed. So now with liquid metal, really the only thing I'm that worried about, and I'm not super worried about this, but I wanna make sure that the liquid metal doesn't flow down onto these little capacitors down here, probably some resistors too. So what I'm gonna do is put some conformal coating over these, and that will protect them just in case the liquid metal does happen to um, flow over the edge and onto them. I'm gonna be using TG Shield from Thermal Grizzly, same company that makes the liquid metal I'll be using in a minute here. And we're just gonna go over here and apply it like that. And apply it like this. Comes in like a nail polish bottle. In fact, in one of my videos, somebody said they thought it was nail polish. Pretty sure it's not, but who knows? Maybe it is. Either way, it seems to do what it's supposed to. So nail polish or not nail polish, I don't really care. I'm gonna give a nice thick coating on this. It'll take a bit to dry, but it will protect everything real nicely. Just gonna take it all the way to the edge here, just to make it look a little better. Even though it absolutely doesn't matter at all. There we go. And that's actually already drying, so by the time we get liquid metal installed, that should be nice and dry. We can put it back together. I am gonna clean this chip again. I'm actually just rubbing on it with a dry cotton bud. Ah! We don't want any of that on there, that's for sure. Should have been a little more careful there. Okay, that is nice and clean. Looks like I got a fingerprint on this one, though. There we go. Okay, and the conformal coating is already getting fairly dry, so I think it's time to apply some liquid metal and get this thing back together. And I just want to make sure the heat sink side is just as clean. As clean as we can get it. The cleaner we can get it, the better the liquid metal will stick to the surfaces. Just have better contact there, which means better cooling, which is what we're going for. Okay, we just need a tiny bit. This is actually the first time, I think the first time installing liquid metal in a laptop. I'm usually doing it on PS5s, and PS5s take a ton of liquid metal compared to how much laptops take. So I don't know if this tube is full. It is not, oh, there we go. Yep, that's too much. Okay, let's start with that much. So we're just gonna rub it all over the surface here. Without getting any conformal coating on it, hopefully. Now 
now a tiny bit on here. Hey, that looks pretty good. Tiny bit on here. Oop, too much. Tiny bit on here. A little more than that. Okay. This is actually taking pretty well. It's coating the surfaces and I have to rub it in a little bit in spots, but for the most part, it's looking really good. Hey, that looks pretty good. This one's going to be a little more difficult, especially because I can't quite see how much I need to have on here. Can't see where the square is that the die is going to go right against. Okay, I think that is looking pretty good. We've got a thin coating on all the surfaces. I'm gonna put just a little bit more on this because I feel like that could use more, just a tiny bit. Spread it around. Okay, and I think we're ready to go. Let's get the heat sinks back installed. Hopefully this is gonna solve our cooling issue. Next, fans, battery connector, back cover, or bottom case. Then we can start it up and see if what we did did any good. But now that I think about it, I wanna make sure that that conformal coating is totally dry. So I'm gonna set this aside and let's take a look at this LG laptop. And here we go. Let's see what this one does. Starts up so far, okay. It does show a picture on the screen. It like flashed and then it came back. So, oh, this looks good. Oh, we got a line on the screen right there. Went almost all the way across. I don't know if that's part of the issue or what here. So we did have a little flash on the screen and then some kind of broken lines on the screen, but so far the screen is staying on okay. Name your device. Let's name our device Fred. Oh, okay, look at that, wow. Okay, that's a problem. Um, oh, here we go. Okay. So it was flashing and just moving the screen made it stop. I wonder if there's like a ribbon cable or something that's loose in there. That would be amazing if that's all it was. I mean, with my luck, it's probably not, but okay. I don't want to take this too far. I'm going to go and finish as much setup as I can and then kind of see how the screen does during this process. So I definitely can't figure this out for sure. It's like it'll go through and start flashing and then I'll do something else and then it'll come back. We'll set up as a new device. Oh, 
Okay, I think at this point, I'm gonna take the back cover off and let's take a look at that cable that connects the screen to the board and let's just see if that is fully connected and if there's any damage on it. The LG Graham laptop costs $1,600 brand new. Right now on Amazon, you can get one similar to the model that I'm working on for about $800. That's the used price, but still quite a bit of money for a laptop. And these LG Grahams are nice and light, which I love about them. So I'm really hoping I can get this one fixed. Wow, this is a tiny computer. So this looks like the display cable right here. It goes up through the hinge here, and then another display cable over here, maybe. Nope, some sort of sensor apparently. Okay, so far I don't see anything obvious that should be causing that issue. This display cable, I mean, from what I can tell, it looks like it's on here pretty good. Uh, it is a little bit loose though. Not like a lot, but there's a little bit of looseness in there. I don't know, that might be enough to do it. Don't see any issues with the cable itself. So then the other thing is if there's an issue where it goes through the hinge or something like that. So that's the only thing that I see that has to do with the display other than, you know, there, it's possible that there's some sort of issue on the board somewhere. But I don't think that's it. I feel like it must have to do with this cable. I think I want to remove this hinge right here and have a look at how this display cable goes through the hinge. So then we can see if there's any issues there. And might as well undo this side too so we can just take the whole display off, hopefully. There's that one and this one. All right. And the next question is whether we should try and remove this back cover from the display. I really don't want to because that's a lot of work and kind of dangerous with this thin of a display. It'd be super easy to break that. But I kind of feel like we need to have this off of here so we can check out the display cable where it hooks into the display panel. So let's see if we can get it apart without breaking anything. Oh, there we go. Okay. Really don't like prying on this thing. There we go. Whoa, good thing, good thing I'm using a plastic tool. Okay, good so far. Just got a little more to get before it's all the way off. Got it. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. All right, now it looks like that connector goes right there. Oh, and it looks like it might have been a little loose right there. So, yeah, look at that. It wiggles around in there. Yep, that cable's loose right there. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is unstick it from this tape down here. There we go. Then I'm gonna put this back in. And hopefully that's gonna make it so Actually, we need a little more, we need a little more room here. Is 
There we go. Now this is only part of it. Another part of the screen goes up here. So, I mean, I, I, this was definitely loose. I can't say for sure that that's the only issue here, but this is definitely an issue. Hopefully the only one. Okay. Make sure that's all the way in there as far as it can go. And it is. So we'll lock it down, retape this, re-stick that down, make sure it's got plenty of play in there. Okay, so that part's good. This part goes up into the display. I'm not sure how difficult the display is to remove, or if we even need to, but let's remove. Okay, you know what? A repair person needs to know when to stop. And this is where I stop messing with the display. I don't want to break it, so I'm going to reinstall it. I'm hoping that's enough to have caused the problem. I think it is, but I don't know for sure. The rest of the cable over here looks to be in good condition. So let's get this back installed and see if that one little cable is enough to fix it. Okay, now hopefully I can get this display back installed. Okay, good so far. Display cable. I don't know why I disconnected that without disconnecting the battery first. Always disconnect the battery before you work on any display stuff. Because simply messing around with this cable with the battery hooked up can cause it to burn out the backlight and probably other things too. Hopefully I didn't do that here. We'll find out soon enough. Okay, got everything back in. Now we can connect the battery back up. Now we can put the back cover back on. Then we can start it up and see if it works. Now before we take a look at that LG and see if that fixed the display issue, let's take a look and see if this razor is working. Now that that conformal coating has had plenty of time to dry, here we go. Is the power on? Oh, there we go, it's powering on. We got something on the screen. It's a little worried there for a second. Okay, let's listen for the fans though. Oh, zero fan noise so far. Okay, we got the fans coming on a little bit, which is sometimes what they'll do when they first turn on. That fan noise is significantly less than it was already. Even though the fans are on right now, let's see if they ramp back down. There we go, they're ramping way back down now. Okay, so the Razer laptop seems to be fixed. I need to use it for a little more extended periods of time and just make sure, but right now it seems like the fans are nice and quiet compared to what they were. In fact, right now they're, you can just barely even hear them. Now that we got this one, at least I think fixed, let's take a look at that LG. So let's start up the LG Gram and see if it's fixed. Okay, good so far. No issues with the screen right now. Oh, and it already started flashing. But what I noticed is during startup, it didn't flash at all. So I think I might have an idea what might be going on. Okay, so I have to see if I can get to this. Oh, here we go. Need to go to Device Manager. And over to Display Adapters. Come on. There we go. Oh, almost there. Oh, come on. We're going to uninstall the Intel Iris XE graphics. Uninstall. And there we go. It's fixed. 
I totally should have checked this before I started taking it apart, but for some reason I just forgot that some computers have that issue with that display adapter. But the nice thing is, even though I did take it apart, it was actually a super easy fix. So we're able to fix both the LG Gram and the Razer Blade Pro 17. If you like this type of video, I'll put another video up on your screen that I think you're gonna like as well, where I'm trying to fix even more laptops. Thank you for watching today, and I hope you have a good one.